Stop editing images manually in Photoshop. Instead, let this new AI do it better and faster. It's called Flux Context, and it absolutely smokes ChatGPT and Google Gemini when it comes to image editing. While ChatGPT takes nearly a minute and still struggles to keep characters and scenes consistent, this tool can generate up to four images in under 10 seconds, all while keeping your original image intact. In the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how to use Flux Context in your workflow to save time and finally get the results you actually want. Let's dive in. Flux Context is available on almost every major image generation platform, like OpenArt, FreePick, and many more. But the easiest way to try it out is in the Flux Playground, where you'll get 200 free credits just for signing up. Click the first link in the description. It'll take you straight to the Flux Playground. By default, you'll land on the Generate tab. From there, open the drop-down menu to see all the available Flux models. Just a heads up, only Context Pro and Context Max have image editing capabilities, now you'll see the option to upload your image. Just make sure your image is under 4.5 megabytes. If it's a PNG and too large, convert it to JPEG to reduce the size. Right-click the image, open it with Photos, then click Edit. You can crop if you want, but I'll just click Save as Copy, select JPG or JPEG, and hit Save. That's it. Your image size is reduced, and the quality stays almost the same. All right, so let's upload this image and start with a simple prompt. I'll just type change her hair color to purple. We'll use the Flux Pro model, then click on the three dots to open the settings. Here, you can choose the aspect ratio. I'll go with four to three. Next, set how many images you want in a batch. I usually prefer two. There's also a safety filter. If your prompt keeps getting flagged, just raise the tolerance number a bit. Then there's prompt up sampling. Turning this on adds more detail to your prompt. And finally, choose the output format for your image. All right, let's hit generate. And in just a few seconds, it's done. You'll notice it only changed the hair color. Everything else, perfectly intact. Now it's not a 100% replica, but it's about 90 to 95% the same, which is pretty impressive. The only other tool that comes close is Gemini. Here's Gemini's result. The hair color changed and 100% of the image stayed intact, but the quality is low and there's a watermark, which makes it hard to use in any real project. Flux, on the other hand, gives you sharp, high-res output, almost full HD, and no watermark. So yeah, it's way more practical to use in your projects. Now let me show you something really interesting. Let's head over to the Edit tab. Now here, you'll see an option to upload your image. I'll upload this book poster. For a precise edit, click on the plus icon and select Add Rectangle Hint. This lets you select only the area you want to edit. I'll highlight this text, and in the prompt, I'll type, change the word the to my, then hit Generate. And here's the result. Honestly, it's super impressive and incredibly useful. If you look closely, Flux AI tries to preserve the original font style as much as possible. Not only that, it edited only the selected area. Everything else stayed completely intact. Now, sometimes we make mistakes in handwritten documents, or we just need to change something later. But editing handwritten text can be really challenging. So let's see if Flux has a solution for that. I'll upload this image of a document that has a lot of handwritten text. I'll start by selecting the name. You can also select two different areas at once. And if you want to deselect something, just click on the rectangle and it'll disappear. All right, so I've selected the name. In the prompt, I'll type, change the name Alan Walker to Mark Smith and hit generate. And this is where the results blew my mind. Just look at the text. You wouldn't even know it was edited. It matched the handwriting so well, it's hard to believe an AI pulled this off. Now, I generated four variations, and here's what happened. In the first one, there was a small typo. In the second, the name Alan went missing from another part of the document. That happened because I included the name Alan in my prompt, asking to replace it. So the AI probably flagged it and removed it elsewhere too. But once I changed the prompt and only mentioned the new name, I got all four results completely perfect. No typos and no missing text. So yeah, the way you write your prompt really affects the output. Now, let me show you how to edit two different areas at once. Just select the rectangle hint and draw over the areas you want to edit. Currently, you can only select two areas per image. I used a super simple and precise prompt. Just mention the color of each rectangle and the text I wanted to appear there. And here are the results. Only the selected areas were edited, and it was 100% accurate this time. If you want to continue editing, just pick any of the generations you like, then repeat the same steps. 
That way, you can continue the edit just like a chat. Let's see how well Flux Context can generate consistent characters and compare the results with Runway and Midjourney. I've uploaded this Disney-style image of a woman and used a simple prompt. She is standing in the rain with an umbrella. Here are the results from Midjourney using their new Omni reference feature. Quality-wise, they're stunning, but the character's appearance has changed. The face and hair are about 80 to 90% accurate, which is decent, but the outfit and body structure are totally random in every image. And yep, Midjourney is still struggling with fingers, even in 2025. Here are the results from Runway ML. It actually does better than Midjourney when it comes to character consistency, especially with real human faces as we showed in our Runway video. But when it comes to animation style images, they feel too static. Midjourney still wins in terms of dynamic poses and artistic flair. That said, Runway does have an option to upload a background image, so you can sometimes get better quality environments using that trick. And finally, here are the results from Flux Context. I'd say the quality is about the same as ChatGPT's image model, but with much better character consistency. The colors are vibrant, and overall the visuals feel more alive than what we got from Runway. Now here's the thing, don't let one example shape your opinion. There are so many use cases that can completely shift your perspective. For me, even though Midjourney still messes up fingers, I'd still choose its images for most creative and artistic scenarios. If I need realistic, consistent characters, I'd go with Runway. The quality is better, and you get more control. As for Flux, so far it's been great for quick and precise image editing. Bottom line, try out all these tools yourself to really understand where each one fits best in your workflow. Alright, so there are a lot of useful things you can do with this tool to save time on manual work, like photo restoration. I uploaded this old, damaged photo into Flux and typed a simple prompt. Restore the damaged photo and bring back the colors. And honestly, I'm not even surprised because I knew it would handle it well. If you tried this with ChatGPT, you'd probably get a completely new image. But Flux actually preserves the original face and identity of the people in the photo. Just look at the before and after comparison in Photoshop. It's 100% intact. With Flux Context, you can even change the weather or time of day in an image. I use this photo and change the lighting to sunset. And if you compare the before and after, you'll see every single pixel is intact and only the lighting has changed. Now, your prompt plays a big role in that. I found a really simple example in their prompt guide that gave a 100% consistent result. So always keep your prompt simple and precise. There are plenty more examples I could show, but some of them are things you can actually do even better with ChatGPT. So instead, I suggest you focus on what ChatGPT can't do, like precise edits and maintaining character consistency. That's how you'll really get the most out of these AI tools and save a ton of time on manual editing. Oh, and if you're still curious about this chat-based image editing, we did a whole video on Google Gemini. It's packed with crazy stuff you'll want to try. Go check it out. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.